Hello. In this fourth video, we will be covering how to perform the suspend, reset from suspend, resume, reset from high speed, and chirp tests for compliance testing of USB 2.0 high speed devices. Suspend, resume, reset from high speed, reset from suspend, and chirp. For these tests, we will continue using most of the same hardware and software from the previous videos. The MSO 5204B oscilloscope, TDS USB 2 compliance test software along with the TDS USB 2 compliance test fixture, and USB high speed electrical test tool from USB.org. One change from past setups is we will be using two P6245 active single ended probes and TPA BNC probe adapters instead of the TDP 1500 active differential probe used before. The test fixture configuration is the same for each of these tests, so we will cover that now. The USB test fixture is connected to our host PC via USB cable attached to port J37. The board is powered by a USB cable attached to J92. Our device under test is connected to port J34. Finally, our two active single-ended probes will be connected to the D plus and D minus J31 pins. At this time, we want to make sure that our test fixture switch, S6, is switched to the init or initialize position. Here is a quick look at our fixture when it's all connected. As you can see, we have not yet attached our device under test, in this case our USB thumb drive, to our test fixture. We will be doing that a little bit later. Since all of these tests use the same hardware configuration, this video should be fairly brief. We'll start by opening the USB high speed test software on our host PC. If you recall from past videos, your host PC may have multiple PCI buses used for your various USB ports. Through trial and error, I've determined which PCI bus my particular fixture is connected to. Once again, as a reminder, the software will take over all USB ports on the selected bus. If you still want control over the other attached USB devices, you need to either make sure those devices are attached to a different USB PCI bus or use USB 3.0 ports instead. Now that we've selected the proper PCI bus, we need to identify our device under test. Simply plug in your device under test to port J34 and click enumerate. You should see the device pop up in the device list. Now that we've selected our desired PCI bus, we need to identify our device under test. Simply plug in your DUT to your test board and click enumerate in the test software to identify your DUT. Moving over to our scope now, we need to start the TDS USB 2 compliance test software. Once the software is running, we'll go about configuring the software as well as the electrical compliance test tool on our host PC for the remainder of the high speed test we'll be performing in this video. We'll select the high speed tab in the TDS USB 2 test software and then click more to bring up the required tests for this video. So you see I've already highlighted the suspend test. Now I'm going to double check that my configuration is correct. For signal direction, we'll be using upstream, and our selected sources for D plus and D minus will be channels 1 and 2. Once we've confirmed that this configuration is correct, we can click the little running man icon to begin our test. You'll see a message pop up that says, press OK when correct waveform is acquired. What we're going to do now is move over to our host PC software and send the device command suspend for our DUT and click execute. As you can see, once we've done this, you should see this waveform on your screen. If your waveform looks different than what you see in this video, then you've sent the incorrect waveform and you need to repeat the steps for this test. In this case, this is the correct waveform, so we're going to go back to TDS USB 2 and press OK. TDS USB 2 is then going to process this information and, in this case, give us a pass. 
we can check the actual results by clicking on the pass button and see the suspend test time in our case versus the USB spec. Continuing on, we'll be going back to the measurements tab and select to go to the nest test which is the resume. I'm going to highlight resume and once again click on configure to confirm that our configuration is correct and then click the running man. Moving back over to our host PC, we're going to go to our device command list and select resume and click execute. Once again, our oscilloscope is going to capture our desired signal. Your signal should look like what you're seeing here on the video. We can click OK on our scope and have it process the captured waveform and give us our test results. And once again, we have a passing result and if we click on the pass we'll be able to see our actual test result and the parameters used for the test. The next test is the reset from high speed test. So once again we'll be going to measurements, select, choosing the reset from high speed test, clicking configure, and then clicking the running man. On our host PC, we'll be going to the device command list and selecting reset as our command and clicking execute. Confirm that your waveform looks like what you see here in the video and then click OK. The next test is reset from suspend. So I'm going to go and select reset from suspend, configure, and then click the running man. Now for this test, since we're resetting from suspend, our device needs to be put into a suspended state before we can actually reset it. So I'm going to go to the device command list and first execute the suspend command and then going to execute the reset command. Now you'll see that I've acquired the desired waveform. As always, double check to make sure your waveform looks like mine before clicking OK on your oscilloscope. For the final chirp test, the configuration changes slightly. So going back into our measurement select and choosing chirp and then configure, you'll see that now we have new selections for our measurement configuration need to make sure that for select dot we've chosen device which will highlight the tests EL 28, 29, and 31. Our sources remain the same channels 1 and 2 for D plus and D minus. All that's left to do is click the running man. Moving back to our host PC what we actually need to do to see the correct signal is enumerate the bus which will reinitialize our USB device and create the desired chirp. Sometimes this needs to be done more than once to achieve the proper result. Here's what we want our waveform to look like for the chirp test. Once your waveform looks like this, you can press OK as before to complete the testing. This concludes the suspend, resume from suspend, reset, resume from high speed, and chirp test procedures for USB 2.0 high speed devices. The next video will focus on receiver sensitivity tests as per the USB 2.0 high speed standard. Once again, for any additional information and support on Tektronics equipment and test solutions, please visit our website www.tech.com support. Thanks as always for watching.